Now, first, if you if you have read the first article, on, um, Article Eleven Fifty Six of Obligations and Contracts, it defines what is an way? obligation. Now, it says here an obligation is a juridical necessity to give, to do or not to do. The term obligation is derived. No, it is from a Latin word, uh, obligatio which means tying or binding. No, if you look at tying, no, uh, it binds the parties no, to perform his or her obligation. Now, in obligation, you have essential elements. Um, these are the essential elements of an obligation. You have a passive subject, a debtor or obligor, he is the person that will perform the obligation that is required to perform an obligation. And on the other hand, an active subject is the creditor or obligee. Is the one, is the party who requires that a performance you know, be performed by the passive subject is the debtor, the obligor of the obligation. Another important element is, of course, an object or the subject matter of the obligation. Or sometimes you call it prestation also. Now, an object is uh, the subject matter of the obligation. Now, fourth, the last one is a juridical tie. It is the efficient cause. No, either why the, re, the purpose, the reason why the, um, the obligation needs to be performed. Now, if you look at the example that I have uh, prepared for you, no, A is obliged himself, A obliged himself to deliver to B a car. If you look at the statement, no, A there, who is the passive subject, no, it is A. Because A there is uh, required to perform an obligation to deliver no, a car. A is the debtor of that obligation. Now, who is the active subject in that given example? It is, the, it is B, who is the creditor or the obligee, the one who requires the performance of an obligation. B there is the active subject. Now, what is the object of the obligation? The object of the obligation there is a car. Now, that A is required to deliver to B. A juridical tie is the efficient cause. Either um, there is an agreement or a contract. Now, in this given example, uh, it can be gleaned that it is a contract or an agreement to deliver the car to B by A. Now, based on that definition, you know, it says here it is juridical necessity to give, to do, or not to do. Uh, it is the juridical necessity to give. The obligation is not merely only merely to give. An example of a real obligation is to deliver. There is also another, another kind of an obligation, which is an obligation to do, which is a positive personal obligation. Like, for example, to paint. Now, it is a, an obligation to do. 
Now, there is also a negative personal obligation of not to do. And that is an example of which is an obligation not to build. So these are kinds of obligations under um, this topic. Now, uh, obligations, of course, obligation should arise you know, from, from a source. Like, for example, um, you have here five sources of obligations. You have law. Second, you have contracts. Third, you have quasi-contracts. Fourth, you have crime or offenses. Fifth, you have quasi-delict. Now, law as a source of an obligation, you know, it is a legal obligation, and demand here is not necessary and compliance is a must. For example, there is a law requiring all citizens of the Philippines to pay their taxes, file and pay their taxes on time. So that is an obligation um, of all the citizens of the Philippines to not only citizens of the Philippines, no, it can be an alien deriving income no, within the Philippines must file the um, prescribed form and pay uh, the, 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 the tax due. Now, you also have contracts no, as a source of an obligation. It is a contractual obligation. It has a binding force. No? As you have learned in my previous lecture, that uh, uh, contracts can be, contracts no, are sources of obligations, different kinds of obligations. Now, it also requires that when a party enters into a contract, there should be compliance in good faith, meaning the other party there should not commit um, any dishonesty you know, um, uh, before and even during you know, the performance you know, of uh, his or her obligations under the contract. Where can you find these obligations you know, under the contract? You know? Mainly, we can responsibilities of each parties, parties under the contract or agreement. If you look at a contract of sale, you know, the contract of sale, the obligation or the responsibility of the seller is to deliver the things sold, to take care of the things sold, to deliver the to deliver whatever um, the accessories you know, of the thing sold. So these are uh, the, the obligations and the contract you know, can Parang paradali sabton are responsibilities of each parties under the contract or duties. Now, quasi-contracts, on the other hand, there is no pre-existing contract no, under quasi-contract, but the law creates a contract on the basis of unjust enrichment principle, uh, which no one should unjustly enrich himself at the expense of another. In a case of a negotiorium gesture, like for example, if you have a property and uh, nasunog ang property, no, and uh, your neighbor is trying to save, no, some of your uh, belongings, and then uh, or uh, some of your belongings, and uh, or um, your neighbor nagpahulam karon ng fire extinguisher. Of course, no, under under quasi contracts, you are obliged to reimburse that neighbor for the expenses he has incurred in saving your belongings from burning. You have also solothio indebity or payment by mistake. Example of solothio indebity is when you uh, when you go to Starbucks, for example, and you bought there a a cold coffee, a frappuccino, and then iced coffee, and then you gave the lady, the cashier there. 1,000 pesos and the coffee cost only 500 and then the cashier did not um, give you the, 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 the change, no? exact change. No? So by, 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 by law, no? under quasi-contract, that cashier is obliged to return the, the, uh, the change, no? the, the, the remaining money. No? Because, as I said, the basis of quasi-contract is unjust enrichment. No one should unjustly enrich himself at the expense of another. 
uh, there was another example wherein uh, there was a bank no sayup karon ang banko og wire no sa money the bank wired supposedly only $10,000 but added few zeros there and the bank was able to wire 1 million inadvertently or by mistake to a cert to a depositor that depositor cannot cannot say that uh, uh, the 1 million is mine no no the by 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 law he is required to return what uh, what was not what was given that is not due him now you also have the fourth obligation fourth sources of obligation which is crime or offenses crime under revised penal code and offenses under special law as with respect only to the civil liability aspect as if you commit a crime when you commit a crime what is the penalty for committing a crime you can be you can go to jail no you can serve your sentence in the in in, in jail that's the criminal li criminal liability. Now, as far as civil liability, no, you can all the, the the convict there can will also be liable, no, for the civil aspect of the crime in a form of either returning the cost, restore, or to pay for damages. Example: if uh, if you steal if you steal, no, something from another person. No, and a case is filed against you for theft. No, you can go to jail, and or end. No, uh, on top of that, you need to um, return return the the thing that was stolen, or if it cannot be returned, then you need to restore. If it cannot be restored, you need to pay for damages. The last source of obligation is quasi delic again there is no pre-existing contract no, in this uh, kind um, in this source no in quasi delic there is no pre-existing contract it is based on negligence now um so you are required to pay for damages like for example if you an example of uh, quasi delic is when you drive your car and then recklessly, you, know, you were driving your car, you were drunk, and then you bump somebody, and you also you also uh, cost no damage to the property of another. Now in that case, you will be you will be you are obliged to reimburse or to pay for for damages, you not know, to restore the thing back, or in the case of if you cause physical injuries. No, to nakabangga ka na na no, na 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 piang ang imong nabanggaan, and then you will also will you will pay you no know, for the hospital expenses and other other consequential expenses, even salary of that uh, person no, you 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 bumped or hit. Good afternoon. Welcome to module two of obligation and contracts. Module 2 covers topics under nature and effect of obligations. Now, there are two kinds of object of obligations. You have specific versus generic thing. Now, what is the purpose why we need to make a distinction if the object of the obligation is specific or not? Because we need to distinguish because in order to determine the obligations of the parties required under the law. And it is also important to distinguish whether the object of the obligation is specific or generic as to the rule, as to the application of the rule, as to who bears the loss, deterioration or damage of the thing. Now let's first define what is a specific thing. A specific thing is said to be specific or determinate when it is particularly designated or physically segregated from all others of the same class, as provided under Article 1459. Now, the following are the examples of specific thing under the Leon book. The watch I am wearing, the car sold by X, 
My Dog Named Terror, the house at the corner of Rizal and Del Pilar Streets, the Toyota car with plate number AAV344, this cavan of rice, the money I gave you. So you can determine no, a specific thing right away. It, uh, it, if it is particularly designated or physically segregated, you can uh, physically segregate it from all others of the same class. No generic thing, on the other hand, refers only to a class or genus to which it pertains and cannot be pointed out with particularity. It is too general. It is a general thing. Example of generic thing is a Bulova calendar watch. There's a lot of Bulova calendar watch, different kinds of model. And there's even a, sometimes uh, the, the watch company would issue per, every year. So the, in this case, the thing there is not specific. You also have a, another example, a 2006 six model Japanese car. There's a lot of Japanese car in 2006. A police dog. There's a lot of police dog. It can be a German Shepherd. It can be um, uh, other other no other police dogs. A caban of rice. The sum of ten thousand pesos. Now, as I said, the purpose why we need to make a distinction if the object of the obligation is specific or not is in order to determine the duties of the obligor debtor in the obligation, because the obligation of the uh, debtor obligor differs if the object is uh, specific or generic. It is also important to distinguish the, the, the object of the oblig obligation as to the application of the rule, you know, as to who bears the loss, deterioration, or damage of the thing. Now, generic thing never perishes. Because generic thing can be replaced. It is replaceable. It never perishes. And when it never perishes, the obliger debtor there is still obliged to deliver a thing of the same kind. The obligation to deliver there is not extinguished or terminated. On the other hand, a specific thing is irreplaceable. And the obligation to deliver is extinguished if the thing is lost, damaged, or deteriorated. Now, under the law, the following are the duties of an obligor debtor in an obligation to give a specific thing. First is the preservation of the thing. Second, the delivery of the thing itself. Third, delivery of, of the fruits of the thing. Fourth, delivery of accessions and accessories. And fifth, answer for damages in case of non-fulfillment or breach or violation. Now, let's go over each one of these duties. As I said, these are the responsibilities or the obligations of the obliger debtor in an obligation to give a specific thing. The obliger debtor is obliged to preserve the thing. And the preservation of the thing requires a degree of care. The parties, the, the obliger needs to observe a, a, a standard of care in the delivery of or in the giving of a specific thing now as to the rule of as to the rule on how on what degree of care that an obliger debtor needs to observe in the preservation of the thing the following rule no shall be followed if there is an agreement if the parties so agreed no, that uh, this is the care, the degree of care that we will uh, observe in this obligation to give a specific thing, then it shall be followed. It is the agreement of the parties that will be followed as to what degree of care needed in that obligation. 
Now, how about if the parties did not agree as to the degree of care uh, that the that the obligor debtor needs to observe in the performance of this particular obligation, then the following rule should be applied. In the absence of an agreement, standard of care shall be followed. And if there is an agreement that it is that the, that the obligor debtor needs to observe extraordinary care, then that can also be followed. But in the absence of any agreement, standard of care or the due diligence of a good father, the family is required in the performance of an obligation. However, there are certain obligations under contracts, under a specific contract, so specifically, particularly contract of carriage that requires a higher standard. The parties cannot agree to a lesser standard. It should be, uh, it, the, the law requires that a standard of uh, extraordinary standard of care needs to be observed by the obligor that are in the performance of an obligation. Example of a contract of, contract of carriage, ka nang musakay ka og jeep. No, no, ka nang musakay ka og jeep. The, uh, any kind of public transportation, the law requires, it is a contract of carriage. The law requires extraordinary care in the performance uh, of that of, uh, in the performance of the obligor in that particular obligation because it is the safety and life that is at stake in the performance of that particular obligation. Third duty is the delivery of fruits of the thing. Now, fruits can be different kind. You have natural, you have industrial, and you also have civil fruits. Natural, if there is no intervention of human in the pag fruits. For example, kung naakay ka, naakay punuan sa iba, ang, uh, ang fruits are na, wala yung din, wala yung spray hand, wala yung human, that's natural fruit. But yeah, if kung naay, if the human that intervene in, in uh, such as by spray, to get to, to para mamulag, mangunod ng Kahoy, oh, then the fruits the there is, is, uh, is uh, already considered industrial. We also have another kind of fruit, which is civil fruits. Civil fruits in the form of rent, rent. the income, income derived from leasing the property is a civil fruits. So, so the obligor there is obliged, obliged to, to deliver the fruits, fruits of the thing. thing. And of course, no, no, forgot the second one, one the delivery of the thing itself. itself. In an and obligation to give a specific thing, the obligor debtor is obliged to, to deliver that specific thing under, under the obligation, obligation and nothing else. Yes. Fourth is the delivery of accessories and accessories. Now, now the definition of accessories and accessories, it is. Uh, Accessions are the fruits of, of or additions to or improvements upon a thing. Example, if, if the thing there is a land, land, any improvements such as a house or trees in the land are, are considered accessions. And when, when the obligor like like has, has an obligation, obligation to deliver a land, 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 which is the land, 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 Accessories, on the other hand, hand are things joined to or included, included with, with the principal thing for the land master's management, better use or corporation, such as key of a house, house frame, frame of a picture, picture bracelets, bracelets, bracelets that you watch, watch machinery, machinery in a factory, or a violin. The principal thing for the function of the office is accessories, such as a charger of your cell phone. Cell phone. Not only the obligation is answered for damages in cases of non fulfillment or breach. The obligation therefore would be liable for damages in cases that there is a uh, non performance obligation or in case of violation of the obligation required of him. Now, how about the duties in obligation to give a temporary thing? The obligor debtor is required to deliver 
Quality agreed, agreed upon by the parties. parties. Second, liability for fraud, negligence, delay, or contravention of the tenor under Article 1170, which we will discuss in our subsequent uh, slide. How about if the obligation is an obligation to do? It is not an obligation to give. What are the duties of a, an ob, uh, obliger debtor? The obliger debtor there if he fails to perform an obligation because it is an obligation to do. So, so if he fails to perform an obligation, the, the obliger creditor will require the debtor of obligor to perform that obligation or, or make or, or make, make the other party, party no not it make, make another person to do it at the expense of the debtor the debtor there will pay for the expenses incurred no in hiring somebody to perform the act and second to recover damages how about if the debtor performs an obligation but it is contrary to the terms of obligation? Or how about if the debtor performs an obligation to do but in a poor manner? And items number two and three, it can be undone through a court order. In, in a negative obligation, such as an obligation not to do, which we already discussed no, in module one. If uh, it can, the, the creditor can require the debtor that it the performance be undone, or if it cannot be undone, and then the debtor obliger there will be liable for damages. Now, Article eleven seven zero talks about the grounds for liability for damages in all these four cases the parties will be liable for damages when there is fraud when when there is delay when nagsabot mo that i perform karon ugma ang ang obligation but the other party the obligor debtor there failed to perform his or her obligation it can give rise to damages Negligence, when uh, lack of foresight, lack of skill, and uh, and you cause damage to another, carelessness that cause damage to another, then it can give rise to to damages, and of course violation or contravention of the tenor of the obligation. We will discuss each grounds for liability for damages. 
Now, fraud. Fraud, it is a deliberate or intentional evasion of the normal fulfillment of an obligation. Now, but 1170 talks about incidental fraud. Under Article 1338, it talks about a different kind of fraud. It is causal fraud. Now, 1170 talks about incidental fraud. An incidental fraud is committed in the performance of an obligation already existing because of contract. While causal fraud is employed in the execution of a contract. So, to, to, to better understand the term, no, let's, let's uh, view the example of De Leon. In incidental fraud, no, S there, the seller, obliged himself to deliver to B 20 bottles of wine of a particular brand. S delivered 20 bottles knowing that they contain a cheaper wine. S is guilty of fraud and is liable for damages to B. Causal fraud, example, if B bought the 20 bottles of wine on the false representation of S, that the wine is that uh, as represented by the labels, the fraud committed by S is causal fraud. Without the fraud, B would not have given his consent to the contract. He has the right to have the contract annulled or set aside on the ground of fraud. Consent here is vitiated. So, sa unang example, si S nag-deliver siya. No? There was a consent coming from the buyer no? that uh, he will deliver, a, uh, that the S there will deliver a particular brand of wine, 20 bottles of wine. And S delivered no? the 20 bottles of wine, but gilisan uh, ang sulod to a cheaper kind of wine. No? That's, that's fraudulent. And B there can file for damages against S. While in causal fraud, na induce ang na induce ang buyer to buy the the thing sold by uh, S because of the representation, false representation that it is a class A wine when in fact it's it is a class it is only a class B wine. So there is had had B there knew that uh, it is of different kind, he would not have uh, bought no, the wine um, offered by S. Rules that uh, you need to remember under this topic, responsibility arising from fraud is always demandable on all obligation. Any waiver of an action for future fraud is invalid or void. However, waiver of a past fraud is valid. So, kung magsabot mo that uh, uh, in your ag agreement, no, you, uh, the parties have agreed that uh, na I waiver, that in case mangila ng isa in the future, okay lang. It is considered invalid or void because it, it encourages perpetration of fraud. However, if, it is just, if the fraud was committed and there is a waiver, that uh, parang uh, condoning no, the past fraud, pasgipasaylo ang past fraud, it is valid. Now let's go to the other grounds for liability for damages, which is delay. Now the meaning of delay, it depends on no, what kind of delay. Is it an ordinary delay or legal delay? Ordinary delay is just merely the failure to perform an obligation on time. If A required B to perform an obligation on the last uh, day of uh, March, non-performance on the last day of March, March would make B there um, in ordinary delay. Now, what is legal delay? Legal delay is a different kind of delay. When a when an obligor debtor failed to perform his obligation uh, upon demand, no, after demand has been given, then he will be in legal delay or default. And when an obligor debtor is in the legal delay or default, then the creditor obligee can file now a case against the debtor 
um, obligor for the performance of an obligation. Legal delay is the failure to perform an obligation on time, which failure constitute a breach of the obligation. The delay in the performance of the obligation under 1170 must be either malicious or negligent. What are the kinds of delay? You have mora solvendi, mora acipiendi, you have compensatio more. These are Latin, Latin uh, term for terms for delay. Now, you have mora solvendi if, the, if it is the debtor um, who, um, who is uh, in delay no? in the performance of his uh, obligate, obligation to give or to do. Then it is uh, the term, uh, Latin term uh, used here is mora solvendi. And if it is the creditor, it is mora acipiendi. And if both, if it's if it uh, if, if both parties no fail to or commit a delay in the performance of uh, their obligation, it is compensatio mori. Or the delay of the obligors in reciprocal obligation, like in sale, now the delay of the obligor cancels the delay of the obligee and vice versa. It, it will put both parties in a reciprocal obligation in equal footing. So both are in in delay. Both the creditor and debtor failed to perform his or her obligation on time. Therefore, damages cannot be enforced against each other. Both are at fault. Now, there are three requisites of delay or default by the debtor. To put him in legal delay or default, not ordinary, eh? requisites of delay or default by the debtor. There are three conditions that must be present before a mora solvendi can exist or its effects arise. Effect there is to, um, you would be, the debtor obliger there will be liable for damages. Number one, failure of the debtor to perform his obligation, positive obligation, only obligation to give and obligation to do agreed on the date agreed upon. Second, demand, not mere reminder or notice made by the creditor upon the debtor to fulfill, perform, or comply with his obligation, which demand may either be through court or extrajudicial, ikaw mismo ang magsulat, or through a lawyer when made outside of the court, orally or in writing. And third, wala gihapon ni perform ang debtor sa imuhang demand. And that's the time that the debtor obligor will be in default or legal delay which can now be actionable before the court. You can file a case against that debtor obligor. Let's uh, see some example here. S obliged himself to deliver to B a specific refrigerator on December 10. If S does not deliver the refrigerator on December 10, he is only in ordinary delay in the absence of any demand from B, although a period has been fixed for the fulfillment of the obligation. The law presumes that B is giving S an extension of time within which to deliver the refrigerator. Hence, there is no breach of the obligation and S is not liable for damages. If a demand is made upon S by B on December 15 and S fails to deliver the refrigerator, S is considered in default only from that date. From the date, if an action for specific performance is filed by B on December 20, the payment of damages for the default must commence on December 15 when he made that extrajudicial demand and not on December 20. So, in the absence of evidence as to such extrajudicial demand, the effects of default arise from the date of the judicial demand, that is, from the filing of the case against the obligor debtor. Now, what are the effects of, in case there is a delay on the part of the debtor obligor? The debtor is guilty of breach of the obligation. And therefore, the damages, damages uh, can be filed against the debtor. 
And if it is a, an obligation, like for example, a contract of loan, an obligation to pay money, no, the, the interest there will run against the debtor obligor. And if there is delay, he is also liable even for a fortuitous event. Fortuitous event is any event that has, uh, that uh, uh, cannot be foreseen, although if ano siya, uh, can be foreseen, but it is unavoidable, unforeseeable event. Hindi mo matag na, no? But we will discuss fortuitous event in the subsequent uh, slide. He is liable even for a fortuitous event when the obligation is to deliver a determinate thing. However, if the debtor can prove that the loss would have resulted just the same, even if he had not been in default, the court may equitably mitigate the damages. It does not absolve him from liability, but merely lessen the amount of damages. Malikta, the effects of delay on the part of the debtor, guilty of breach of the obligation, will be liable for damages, or if it is an obligation to pay money, is liable for an interest. Third, he is liable for a fortuitous event that would supposedly would extinguish the obligation to deliver a determinate thing. Fortuitous event is an excuse. It would exempt a party from um, doing from performing his, his obligation to deliver a determinate or specific thing, but it cannot be it cannot be raised when the debtor himself no, was um, in uh, his delay, in default, in legal delay, no, in, uh, in the performance of his or her obligation. Now, in an obligation to deliver a generic thing, the debtor is not relieved from liability for loss due to a fortuitous event. Because generic thing never perishes. It can, it can still be, you can, the obliger debtor can still deliver um, a thing of the same kind and quality. It never perishes. Therefore, the obligation to deliver no, would not lead to, uh, will not extinguish or be terminated. Mora at si Piende, uh, the effects are, as fo are the follows. The creditor is guilty of breach of obligation and therefore liable ng damages. He is liable for damages suffered, if any, by the debtor. He bears the risk of loss of the thing due. If the creditor, like for example, um, uh, nagsabot sila that... Um, I deliver ni A karon ang butang kay B and B refused to accept it on the day agreed upon and then called him back and deliver it on the next day tapos na, uh, nawala ang butang due to a fortuitous event and it's not a determinate thing. It is a generic thing. He bears the risk of the loss. Where the obligation is to pay money, the debtor is not liable for interest from the time of the creditor's delay. Of course, nga no malayable man ang og interest and debtor, cred, uh, debtor uh, obligor when the delay is caused by the creditor. E, the debtor may release himself from the obligation by consignation of the thing or some due, which you will learn in the extinguishment of an obligation. So, kung if the debtor there refuse Uh, uh, if the no, you, you will learn those are one of the means or modes of extinguishing an obligation. Now, compensatio more is is delay by both. No? The delay of the obliger cancels out the effects of the delay of the obligee and vice versa. Both of them cannot claim damages against each other. So delay rule no demand. Debtor not in default or legal delay. There's a typo here. It's not off but or. Rule no demand equals debtor not in default or legal delay. But there are instances na maskin pagwalay demand 
the debtor obliger there will be in legal delay. In, in the following instances that I will enumerate, demand here is not necessary. That uh, will put the creditor debtor in default. Number one, when the obligation so provides. So if say sa agreement, nakabutang dito that uh, without the need of any demand, A is obliged to pay B 10,000 pesos without the need of any demand, it is the it is the obligation that provides it is the agreement that provides that demand is not necessary in such case demand is not necessary to put the debtor obligor in default of course when the law so provides uh, who can argue if the law requires if not requires but if the law says that demand is not necessary such as uh, paying of taxes you don't wait for the BIR to send you notices to demand that you need to pay. No? As 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 uh, when the due date na naanan due date to uh, pay uh, to file taxes and pay taxes, then you have to abide. The law says there is no demand necessary. You will be liable for penalty or interest, no, uh, in case you will be the, uh, you will be uh, late no in the filing and paying of your taxes that's part of the sanction of course when time is of the essence there is demand is not necessary like for example if you entered into an agreement and it's very clear there na gamiton ang thing para sa imong birthday like for example uh, you bought balloons for your birthday uh, s is obliged to deliver 12 balloons pink balloons to be on Sunday because it is uh, B's birthday. That's time. That is the time is of the essence. Be there. It is part of the agreement that it needs to be delivered on that particular day because it is B's birthday. Uh, what will happen if uh, the creditor, uh, from the debtor obligor, will deliver it the next day? Then B there could not use that anymore. It is for a specific purpose. It is used for a specific purpose. Now, as long as the, as long as the debtor obliger knew that it it, it will be used no, in, uh, in 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 a particular event, you know, then it can be considered uh, demander is not necessary because time is of the essence. Of course, when demand would be useless, you know, dili na useless kaayo ang pagdemand kay. Um, Dili dawaton, dili magpatuo, uh, si debtor obligor, no? then uh, demand is not necessary. Or there is already a hesitation or a parang dili, gid mus, dili, gid ni perform, ni, dili nag-ingon yun si Inga, dili niya i-perform yung obligation, then demand would be useless. Of course, when there is performance by a party in a reciprocal obligation, if a, in a reciprocal obligation such as contract of sale, A is obliged to deliver to B a car, and on the other hand, B is obliged to pay 10,000 pesos to A for the pay as payment for, for the car. That is reciprocal obligation. Silang duha na obligation. Mutual. Now, if A delivers the car, to be a there need not demand from from uh, b for payment especially if it is agreed that at the time of the delivery uh, that the payment should be given simultaneously at the time of delivery dungan silbi ba dungan pag deliver bayad you know at the same time so if maka deliver si a sa sakyanan sa car uh, there is no need for a demand can be to pay unless there is an agreement of a different period or different uh, time no, for paying.
Now let's go to the third ground for liability for damages, which is negligence. Negligence is defined as any voluntary act or omission, there being no malice, which prevents the normal fulfillment of an obligation. Negligence is a conduct that creates undue risk or harm to another. Like for example, if you're driving a car and you're drunk and you hit somebody on the road, now you're considered negligent. Now, what are the factors that uh, you need to consider, that we need to consider in order to determine that a party uh, is negligent in the performance of his or her obligation? These are the factors that you need to consider. One, nature of the obligation. Of course, if the obligation there is to deliver flammable materials and the one carrying and the, uh, and the obligor uh, death or their uh, smoke while carrying that material, then it constitutes negligence. That obligor debtor is negligent in his obligation. If uh, masunog ang iyang gidala, hmm? or ni buto, no? Uh, how about circumstances of the person? If a guard, uh, a security guard is uh, manning uh, a store no, and it, uh, he's physically fit and then he sleeps while on duty, no, he's considered guilty of negligence if uh, a robber can, can get in. Circumstances of time, driving a car without headlights at night constitutes gross negligence compared to uh, driving during the day without headlights because he's not required to do that. No? Um, he can clearly see the road during the day. Circumstances of the place, driving 60 kilometers per hour in the highway, in Marcos Highway, in a highway going to airport, no, is permissible as long as it is the required um, speed uh, limit no, going there. But if you're going to drive 60 kilometers per hour in Kugun, you know, when, when there is a heavy traffic, you know, that constitutes gross uh, negligence. Now, the opposite of negligence is diligence. Diba? We discussed that the party must be diligent you know, in, in, in the preservation, must uh, observe diligence in the preservation of the thing. Um, now, there are different kinds of diligence. You have ordinary diligence. This is the standard of care required sa parties in the absence of any uh, higher uh, or higher uh, care or diligence other than ordinary diligence. Now, so, kung naay, if the parties nagsabot sila, the extraordinary diligence ang ilang i-observe, then that will be followed. In the absence of any agreement, it's just merely ordinary diligence. Except if the law requires, in case of contract of carriage, extraordinary care should be observed. As a rule, maka-agree ka, maka-agree ang parties on sa nga form of, uh, form of diligence na no, i-observe sa, part, sa party sa ilang obligation. I, it could be ordinary lang. But except when it is a contract of carriage because the law requires that extraordinary care should be observed in a contract of carriage like for example kanang magsakay ka sa jeep no any public transportation the the driver there need uh, exercises extraordinary diligence until you reach your point of this desti destination because what is at stake here is life and safety of the passengers Sa bank naman, they have uh, different kinds no, of diligence no, based on cases, jurisprudence decided by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says in, in case of banks, it is the highest form of diligence as far as the money deposited to it by its depositors. Because the public relied on banks no, and money are considered property of the depositors. And it is uh, deposited in trust. Um, that the interest, no, the interest karon sa depositor sa banko, and the bank then needs to exercise highest form of diligence. Now, as to rules, responsibility arising from negligence, just like uh, fraud, no, is demandable. However, waiver of future negligence is uh, valid. Unlike in fraud, uh, waiver of future fraud is void it is not valid 
but in negligence, waiver of future negligence is valid, provided, unle uh, huh? provided that he is not in bad faith or it's not it was not deliberately um, committed. Otherwise, it would amount to fraud. Which, uh, if you're going to apply the rule in fraud, future neg future negligence now becomes invalid. Now, there are different kinds of negligence depending on the source of obligation. If the neg negligence arise, you know, arises from a contract, then it is a contractual negligence. Example, if S entered into a contract of sale with B to deliver a specific horse on a certain day and the horse died through the negligence of S before delivery, S is liable for damages to B for having failed to fulfill a pre-existing obligation. No, because of his negligence. This is culpa contractual or contractual negligence. There is also civil negligence, no, assuming no, in the given facts that the horse belongs to and in possession of B, the negligence of S which results in the death of the horse is culpa aquiliana. In this case, there is no pre-existing contractual relation between S and B. The negligence itself is the source of liability. Unlike in contractual negligence, there is a contract. But in civil negligence, there is no pre-existing contract. There is another form of negligence arising from crime. A crime A can be committed by negligence. If B wants, he can bring an action for culpa contractual. Damage the property through simple or reckless imprudence. Here, the crime is the source of the obligation of S to pay damages. The creditor can also be guilty of uh, negligence and uh, the debtor may recover damages. Uh, a video will be shown after this for contributory negligence wherein ang um, naisala ang pikas, no? If, uh, if naisala po ang uh, plaintiff ang nagsumbong, no, the negligence there may, or the damages there may be mitigated by the court. Uh, let's watch the video. Contributory negligence is a conduct on the part of the injured party contributing as a legal cause to the harm he has suffered, which falls below the standard which he is required to conform for his own protection. If the negligence of the plaintiff cooperated with the negligence of the defendant in bringing about the accident causing the injury complained of, such negligence of the plaintiff would be an absolute bar in recovery. If the negligence of the plaintiff is merely contributory to his injury, the immediate and proximate cause of the accident causing the injury being the defendant's negligence, such negligence would not be a bar to recovery, but the amount recoverable shall be mitigated by the court. A trail in the Likno was regularly used by members of the community. Sometime in 1970s, petitioner NPC installed high-tension electrical transmission traversing the said trail. Eventually, some of the transmission lines sagged and dangled, reducing their distance from the ground to only about 8 to 10 feet. This posed a great threat to passersby who were exposed to the danger of electrocution, especially during the wet season. Noble and his co-pocket miner Jimenez were at the Likno. They cut two bamboo poles for their pocket miner. Each man carried one pole horizontally on his shoulder. Both passed through the trail underneath the NPC high-tension transmission lines on their way to their workplace. As Noble was going uphill and turning left on a curve, the tip of the bamboo pole he was carrying touched one of the dangling high-tension wires, 
Noble fell to the ground and died. A post-mortem determined the cause of death to be cardiac arrest, secondary to ventricular fibrillation, secondary to electrocution. She also observed a small burned area in the middle right finger of the victim. The court finds no contributory negligence on Noble's part. Contributory negligence is conduct on the part of the injured party, contributing as a legal cause to the harm he has suffered, which falls below the standard which is required to conform for his own protection. There is contributory negligence when the parties act show lack of ordinary care and foresight that such act could cause him harm or put his life in danger. In this case, the trail where Noble was electrocuted was regularly used by members of the community. There were no warning signs to inform passersby of the impending danger to their lives should they accidentally touch the high-tension wires. Also, the trail was the only viable way from the leak to the tubon, and Snobble should not be faulted for simply doing what was ordinary routine to other workers in the area. Noe was going home to Dumaguete from Cebu. He boarded a Ford Fiera passenger jeep driven by respondent Miniano, owned by respondent Cecilia Bandukinio, and was seated on the extension seat placed at the center of the Fiera. On the way, respondent Noe offered his seat to an old woman. Since the Fiera was already full, Respondent Noe hung or stood on the left rear carrier of the vehicle. Somewhere along Barangay Santo Nino, the Fiera began to slow down and then stopped by the right shoulder of the road to pick up some passengers. Suddenly, an Isuzu cargo truck owned by Petitioner and driven by Herosano, which was traveling in the same direction, hit the rear end portion of the Fiera. Where Respondent Noe was standing, Due to the tremendous force, the cargo truck smashed Noe against the Piera, crushing his legs and feet, which made him fall to the ground. A passing vehicle brought him to the hospital, where his lower left leg was amputated. Respondent Noe's act of standing on the rear carrier of the Piera, exposing himself to bodily injury, is in itself negligence on his part. That showed his lack of ordinary care and foresight that such an act could cause him harm or put his life in danger. It has been held that to hold a person as having contributed to his injuries, it must be shown that he performed an act that brought about his injuries in disregard of warning signs of an impending danger to health and body. Respondent Noe's act of hanging on the fiera is definitely dangerous to his life and limb. Respondent Quinquillera, the Fiera driver, was also negligent. There is merit to petitioner's claim that there was overloading which is in violation of traffic rules and regulations. If the Fiera was not overloaded, Respondent Noe would not have been standing on the rear carrier and sustained such extent of injury. Now the last grounds for liability for damages is contravention of the tenor or the violation of the terms and condition, conditions stipulated in the obligation. It can also give rise for liability for damages. So that's part of a module two. The continuation for module two will be uploaded in eLearn for you to watch, for you to play on um, our next session, which is uh, on Thursday.